and welcome to the Veteran Cinema Podcast! I'm Joe, here with me is my co-host Dan. Hello and greetings. And today's Veteran Cinema Podcast is... Dun Dun Dun! The Karate Kid. Now, hopefully we'll be able to get through all four in this week, along with uh, a Cold War-focused film. But anyway, that's... Well, this is set in the Cold War, but like... You know, that's more a Cold War uh, veteran film. This is uh, this is an interesting movie. Now, we're going to mostly discuss the Miyagi Kree stuff because the thing is, this is veteran cinema podcast, not Karate Kid cinema podcast. And the thing is, me, Mr. Miyagi and Kreese are both war veterans with very different exper- experiences in war. Now, Kreese... Um, is very well respected in the community as a veteran. As established, we're not going to reference Cobra Kai too much, but as referenced in there, he doesn't deserve the respect because, well, he's a monster and he's evil. But Mr. Miyagi is someone who fought in World War II on the American side against Japanese and German forces, but was punished for it with his wife being sent to a concentration camp where, because of a lack of proper care... And the guard's not giving a rat's rear end. Uh, She was left to die in childbirth along with the child. So, uh, Mr. Uh, And they gave a cold letter. They sent a cold letter just saying, yeah, your wife died as well as your son. Oh, well, big whoop, essentially. And Mm -hmm. it's a very cold letter. We regret to inform you, but there's no, yeah, sorry about that. Signed, uh, John, or you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, yeah, by the way, your wife's dead. Keep fighting out there. And this, of course, broke Mr. Miyagi, um, whom we get glimpses of the man he was. He obviously had a really bad temper at one time. He's a drinker. Um, He loved his wife passionately. So we get a bit of a sense that he was maybe a bit like Johnny Lawrence in some ways. And he's a very tragic figure. As for Kreese, he's less tragic. He took what he learned in the war and used it to basically induct kids into a cult of personality, and he's just off on an ego trip. Yeah, it's like he wants to play at being the chief soldier with a bunch of boys. And it's, it's, as you mentioned, a cult of personality. Yeah. Like he's overcompensating. (laughs) Absolutely. He's trash as it as a person but the actor is a great guy and plays him with great style and it's very remarkable and if you also look at like as to the boys Danny LaRusso is of Italian descent his accent is pure Italian throughout this movie I really like it he's um his father was was probably like a first generation immigrant or something Mm -hmm. and Danny grew up in a very Italian neighborhood moves over to California against his will and he's a lost young boy who whose father died when he was really young so he barely remembers him and he ends up bonding with mr miyagi now along the way he ends up on running into an eyeballing up a pretty young girl well i should say a pretty rich young girl who had a previous relationship with a youth called johnny lawrence now in the 80s we regarded Everybody regarded Johnny as the bully. Now, thankfully, I was born in the 90s, so I didn't do that at the time. But the thing with Johnny is he comes in and he says, I just want to talk. Can we talk our differences? I'm sorry about what happened. I just want to talk. Okay, Allie? And she keeps flicking on her radio and trying to drown him out. Then he pulls it away from her. And she says, all right, give it back to me. You promised to talk to me. You promised to hear me out. You promised to let me apologize. Yes, yes, okay. He gives it to her. She flicks it on with a smirk on her face. Uh, Johnny then, in a rage, takes it and throws it down. Danny tries to intervene. uh, Tries to be a bit chivalrous and not, like, he's just like, well, okay, here's your radio. What's going on? Now, Danny's not unreasonable. Johnny ends up grabbing it and shoving it into his arms and pushing him away and humiliating him and going, back off. Um, Allie kind of tells him off a little. Then, uh... Then a fight ensues, and uh, you have Johnny who hits Danny a little too hard a few times, and Danny sucker punches Johnny. So both boys are at fault here. 
But mm-hmm. the thing is, Johnny takes the radio, hands it to Dutch, who then chucks it down her, uh, and breaks it as they speed off on their motorcycles. Now, at school, Johnny starts kind of bullies him during the soccer in the soccer field for flirting with Allie. Um, now, along the way, you get Allie, who very overtly and publicly flirts in front of Danny. And while she, her eyes are on Johnny, knowing that she's basically humiliating him and rubbing it in his face. And Johnny, being a young man, doesn't know how to handle this. So he, it is something that even grown men struggle with. And between Kreef and Allie, Johnny ran into two of the worst people in the city. So he's not had a good time. And you also got his dad at home beating the regular snot out of him. So you've got a kid who's ripe for You've bad influences. And Allie is probably worse than Crease in a lot of ways. Now, Allie ends up uh, basically causing this rift between the boys. Now, Danny, thankfully, though, thanks to this rift, goes to uh, wants to start learning karate to defend himself against Johnny and his buddies, who are roughing him up a little. Goes to the uh, Cobra Kai school, only to find Johnny there, races out, and Crease is an idiot because he, he doesn't realize the raw talent and potential Danny has. Let's him go. Now, at Halloween, though, uh, things go even worse as, well, you've got you've got Danny, who ends up kind of embarrassing Johnny, rightfully, by uh, taking the shower and, and, you know, kind of watering him a little. Uh, Johnny's angry because his, uh, well, marijuana's ruined, so he chases after him. Uh, along the way, he's punched in the crotch and tripped with his Friends sent sprawling after him, which, okay, punching him in the gut is one thing, but punching him in the, you know what, what's wrong with Allie? There's something the matter with her. Like, honestly, is she secretly a Cobra Kai member? Like, what the heck, woman? Like, and I get the feeling that the relationship had run its course with Johnny. She had gotten a little bored. And on the other hand, she likes to make him squirm a little as a teenager. And that there, she, I actually think that she might have a rough time at home right now. And that mm-hmm. she's playing these games because she's uh, wanting to feel good. She's bullying in a way. Yes. And it, it, her, her awful behavior is inexplicable. Now, apparently people think of her as a heroine. But no, she's actually... A, she's as demonic in this movie as Crease. But the, the thing is, especially towards Danny and Johnny, who are put in the mill in this stupid rivalry, which both of them time and again try to weasel out of... But the thing is, at this point, Johnny's so enraged from the attack on him, uh, on Allie's part, and by the humiliation on Danny's part, and being the laughing stock of the school, he races after him. Him and his buddy start beating the crap out of Danny. Now they're the villains here. Uh, well, you've got Mr. Miyagi rushes in, defends Danny, knowing he can't talk these kids down, takes Danny in, takes care of him, and then Danny ends up convincing him to help him. Now, it's interesting because Mr. Miyagi does not want to help him, initially but danny tells him like okay well you telling me to go tell a teacher or something it's just gonna piss them off even more what you're doing you're not actually helping me here you're just telling me oh go deal with it well i've been trying and it's not been working all mm-hmm. they do is beat me up day in day out and they're, it's only gonna get worse at this rate now i need your help and miyagi realizing yeah the kid needs help steps up at long last and goes to talk to crease and ask him can you can you tell your kids to back off? And Chris sees it as what? He can't handle his own weight? Yeah, okay. One-on-one is one thing, but five-on-one's a little much. No one can handle that. Yeah. And you pretty much have Chris. Well, you did. Well, I'm a grown man. Danny's a skinny little kid. Now, back off. And, you know, Chris says no. And then Miyagi says, okay, fine. How about the tournament to decide it? Uh, two months, no bullying. And he even, he even comments to Danny, like, I bought you two months. It's the best I could do. That said, he did not take his feet off on the, when walking on the mat, which you noted, which shows he has no respect for Cobra Kai. Maybe he already knew about them and was just shaking his head at them and going, ah, oh, these punks. Mm-hmm. I get the feeling he knew about them and didn't like them. Because that, the entire philosophy... Is evil. It's far more aggressive than the yeah, very peaceful Miyagi... Yeah... Prefers it's too aggressive for him. Now that said, I say it's evil. Now, people might say, "Well, Johnny was able to put it to good use in Cobra Kai." Yes, 
But his philosophy is actually not strike first, strike hard, no mercy. His his uh, philosophy seems more like how Pit Diem uh, sees the day mm -hmm. and live life to the fullest. It's not actually strike first, strike hard, no mercy. Johnny's not very good at being Cobra Kai, philosophically speaking, to an extent. He's too smart for it. And the thing is, this is really a battle between Kreese and, uh, and Miyagi's uh, philosophies. Kreese has a conqueror's mindset in a way. Like, I'm coming in to despoil and pillage and plunder everything around me. Miyagi has the liberator's mindset. We come in, we fight to liberate people, then we leave. That's it. We don't need to ravage and plunder and destroy everything around us. So you have destruction versus liberation. And there is a very clear difference. And Miyagi represents that greatest generation mindset of America, which is we're here to liberate. Now, there, I admit the politicians went too far with the Manhattan Project, for example. But that, that kind of project is more reflectory of Kreese's philosophy. And you've got... And I know that's controversial for some people, but I'm just saying, like, uh, nuking an enemy when they're down, that's more Kreese's style. That's not Miyagi's style. Miyagi mm -hmm. has the mindset, you've beaten your enemy. You back off, you let him, you shake his hand, and you bow with and show honor towards him. It's two very different philosophies. And, like, you've got... You've got Kreese and Ali who have the mindset, you beat someone, you rub it in their faces over and over and over again. And that's clearly not what Danny and Miyagi are about. Now, at the Old Valley, Ali's clearly turned on by the damage Danny can do. Um, sorry if we're painting her in a negative light, but there's nothing positive that comes out of her in this movie. Mm -hmm. Now, she grow now. does she deserve the life she led? Some of the hardships? No. She's a good person. She's just taken a wrong direction. And, like, everybody as a teenager is stupid. So... We're judging her on being an idiot and a and a jerk as a teenager, but she was. Now, people might rightfully point out, well, Johnny forced a kiss on her, just to taunt Danny. Yes, that's sexual harassment. On the other hand, she's proven herself to be physically and verbally and psychologically abusive towards Johnny. So, who's more abusive? Now, mm -hmm. I know it, it's not exactly an equalizer, but with all the abuse she throws at Danny and Johnny throughout the movie, you're just left kind of going... She she escalates the situation to such an extent that people have to either... There were moments where she could have de-escalated the entire matter. But she refused. She wanted to keep escalating it. And I think she enjoyed having the boys fight over her. Yeah, and, and... it's unfortunate because we don't want to see the main female lead but... who's supposed to be the main love interest stoop to that but in the second movie it's when we see a love interest rise to the occasion the japanese love interest i forget her name is a great love interest she's the best danny ever has for a love interest mm -hmm. in these movies but not that the last one was bad it's just she was a good girl danny was going cobra kai that's the problem but as to miyagi and crease they take different philosophies during the tournament Kri miyagi does not take pleasure in the damage his student is wreaking out He's actually just telling him, just defend yourself, hit them, but you don't have to go too hard. And he's just trying, like, he approves of the victories. He gives nods of approval, but in his eyes you see no glint of satisfaction. He does not take pleasure in this tournament. He doesn't see the point of it. And Danny is reluctant to be in it. You can tell Danny doesn't want to be there. He's enjoying himself doing martial arts, but he's not enjoying fighting to an extent. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it seems weird, but I've got a, one of my best friends is into karate, and he does not he doesn't like fighting, but he likes karate. So there is that philosophy in a lot of people uh, with these senseis. And Kreese though is loving the damage all of his mm -hmm. students are inflicting on others. But you can see that some of them are starting to sober up, so to speak. Yeah, and, and by the time the semifinals roll around. Johnny, for example, can shake hands with his enemy and is very honorable with him, um, even nodding and giving a what seems to be an apology for hitting the guy a little too hard, which the guy accepts. Um, but then you get Danny's semifinal match, and I think it's Bobby who ends up knocking his leg, like pretty much uh, dislocating his leg and heavily injuring it, possibly bruising the bone. And you have 
of course, Kreese, who told him to sweep the leg. And this disqualifies Bobby, who ends up screaming, I'm sorry, Danny, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me. And that damaged Bobby psychologically for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, then Johnny... Now, this is where the final match... We're going to have a very controversial outlook on it. The final match starts with uh, two hits on, I believe, Johnny. Now, Johnny inflicts... Uh, uh, two legal hits. One legal hit. Uh, the referees don't count it. Uh, that's on Danny's second hit. Now, right before Danny inflicts his second hit, scores a second point, Johnny had actually hit him in the gut when he was down and started to back off going, okay, well, I scored a hit. The refs refused to acknowledge it. Uh, so he was taken by surprise when he got a hit. And the refs then immediately acknowledged it, showing they're not... They're being arbitrary. Then uh, Johnny inflicts, I think, well, yeah. Um, you've got Johnny who ends up uh, told to, you know, I think he's told the one told to sweep the leg, actually. And he ends up uh, hitting the leg twice. Then he tries an honorable hit on Danny uh, near, I think, the gut. The, the refs, of course, don't acknowledge the legal hit, and they recognize the two illegal hits. These guys are drunk on the job. There's no way they're sober. They're, they're either sober or uh, on the cut. Or yeah. Something like that. You, you mean drunk or on the cut. Yeah. Like, but, because, like, Johnny lands a legal hit, and then they're like, nope, we're not acknowledging that. Then you see he just punches Danny in the eye and looks at one of them like, how about now? Well, no, minus one point. That was an illegal hit. And you have, you can see Johnny just going, oh, come on. Then he hits Danny's leg, and they're like, no, no, that's another minus point. And he's just like, well, when I land a legal hit, you guys don't acknowledge it. If they had counted as legal hits, he would have already won. But they're like, they're, they're not acknowledging it. Then Danny scores an illegal kick to the eye. Because yeah. any hit to the eye is illegal. Now, I know people want to say that was a legal hit. Actually, it was illegal. Johnny's punch to, the, to Danny's eye was counted as illegal. That means a kick to the eye is also illegal. There, so, there's something going on with the refs. They're not, they're not legit. I mean, it's a very nice scene when Danny does the crane kick. Yes, it is. But the problem is, it, there, there's, like Johnny in Cobra Kai says that was an illegal kick, and Danny says no, but it was. But I'm using the same logic. Johnny's punch to the eye was completely illegal. There was, Johnny had no right doing that. Now, Danny said, I'm okay, it didn't hurt too much, but the judges see it as, that's still illegal. Well... The problem is when Johnny lands legal hits, they refuse to acknowledge them. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like, now, I don't know what the judges' philosophies are. They seem to be trying to extend the match, like, with Danny, because killing his leg there. But they're also just frustrating and, 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 and pushing Johnny to greater heights of rage until he's just like, you know what, I, I just want to freaking kill someone here because... No one's acknowledging the league. I want to fight honorably, but you're not acknowledging my honorable moves. And, and this this match, not because of Danny, but because of Kreese and the judges, pardon the terminology, damned him. Yeah. Now, that said, Johnny's first immediate reaction is, all right, congrats, Danny, here's the trophy. I think Johnny just wanted this match over. He's like... He's a good sport about losing. He is a good sport at his core. But Johnny's just like, you know what? I'm just glad this is over. Screw this stupid match. I mean, I landed, like, okay, I'm going to count his leg hits. I think I consider those illegal. But if you count them, Johnny scored four points. Danny scored two. So that actually, but minus one point because illegal hit. So jo Danny scored one score. Johnny scored four, if you're not counting the punch to the eye and the one illegal hit. But here's the problem with Johnny. It's like, you know, he did the elbow to the leg. He had already hit that leg twice, and he said, okay, that's fine. Now he does it a third time, and they say, no. Like, there's something going on. They're extending the match. Mm-hmm. It's like if there's someone that's uh, pretty much experienced in these kinds of martial arts tournaments, perhaps you could... You could de detail it in the comment section. Yeah, because this is just... What the heck is going on here? This just seems stupid. Now, 
it's not that like the flaws in the judges make it more realistic. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're just frustrated going, Oh man. Now that said, Chris is obviously someone who went for Vietnam and you have a Vietnam war vet versus a world war two war war vet. And you, they also come at things with a very different psychology. That being said, uh, we're going to review other movies where Vietnam vets are going to be treated with the respect they deserve. Because uh, a lot of them suffered a great deal. Oh, yeah. A great deal. Too much. And Kreese, though, I don't know how much he suffered. Because he just seems like a monster. Mm -hmm. He uses his pain just to hurt others. And his behavior in here and in Cobra Kai... And even in the third Karate Kid movie, he seems, him and Silver seem more like uh, Loki from Norse mythology or Mephistopheles from Paradise Lost or even, um, uh, um, uh, Kronos from, uh, the Greek mythology. He's, they're just evil almost for its own sake. And, but... My favorite villain in this franchise is still yet to appear, and he's also a war vet. Silver. <laughs> he's pure evil. Kreese is very pure evil. That guy is just beyond the pall. Yeah. But Miyagi represents all the vir virtues of a war veteran. Kreese and Silver, all the flaws. Like, all, the, all that could be wrong in a war veteran. I don't think there are too many war veterans like those two around, but there might be. But the thing is, they're not drunkards that like yeah here's the thing miyagi though is an alcoholic that's how he copes with his traumas but as we see him progress with the movie he seems to try to put away the bottle throughout the movie he does drink a lot at various points and at one point he breaks down sobbing while drunk and you realize he's not a violent drunk but so much he's actually more likely to be violent towards himself and yes he, johnny lawrence and cobra kai proves to be the same kind of drunk but the thing is, Miyagi is a very pitiful man. He's a pathetic one. drunk. And it's sad seeing him break down like he constantly does when he's drunk. It's very sad and tragic. And he's such a good person, but you, you understand that... He, he needed Danny just like Danny needed him. Yeah, and I like that it's a father-son movie in a way. And mm -hmm. now you see the villain twisting and perverting Johnny... You see Allie exerting a negative influence on the two boys. But you see that despite all these negative influences on Danny and this pressure from the bullies, from Allie, from Chris to be the worst version of himself, he ends up be rising to be the best version of himself. He define, he is the definitive karate kid in that, a positive way. And this is thanks entirely to his mother and Mr. Miyagi, who we haven't talked much about the mother, but we out to at some point. But anyways, we're going to let you guys go. Tell us what you think of this movie. How would you rate the movie? Oh, right. We have to rate this movie. Um, I'm going to say uh, probably a two and a half. I'm going to actually rate it a four. Why? I actually really enjoy it. It's, yeah, it's an era piece of the 80s. It's like... Yeah, get, all the characters are flawed, but it's that kind of... It's basically the soap opera of it all. Yeah, it pulls me in, and I want to care about these characters. The only reason I don't rate it higher is because Cobra Kai set such a high... Like, took it and raised it to a higher... Just did everything better. Mm-hmm. And that's probably also why I really love this movie. Uh, because... Because it adds color, a lot more color to it. Because the sequel, Cobra Kai, added more color to this movie, you mean? Yeah, and... I'm kind just of mentally comparing Karate Kid to Cobra Kai and finding Karate Kid kind of lacking comparison. For me, it escalates why I like it. It's like... Okay. It's like you have the history, and, and then you have Cobra Kai that builds on that history, the missing history, and that makes it even better for me. Okay, I get it. I get it. So, you know what, guys? Uh, tell us what you think. Like, comment in the section if we missed anything in the historical element or the veteran aspect let us know we'd love to hear it um and don't forget to uh subscribe well hit that subscribe button like johnny trying to knock out danny larusso and until next time karate kids <laughs>